buying a fixer-upper property to rent out versus buying one already done. I've done both. Let's go over the pros and cons. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the smack fish, the beat down. The SWAT team is here on another beautiful day of shutting the week down. Hey guys, we're just meeting. My name is William Doria. I am a full-time dad and real estate investor. I have a portfolio of single family, multifamily, and commercial properties. I live off of passive income and I'm gonna show you how to do the same. So, a lot of newbie real estate investors want to know why can't I just buy a property that is already done, turnkey, ready to go? Basically this, why would I buy this when I can buy this? And there's many reasons for either or, there's pros and cons to both, and here they are. So there's a little known something called forced appreciation in real estate. And what basically that means is when you buy a property, let's use easy math here, $100,000 property, right? And it is a done property turnkey. It's worth about $100,000, give or take a little bit. But you're not going to get that much of a better deal on a property that's already done, basically because they can go out, find a real estate agent, and sell to a full retail buyer. But when you can buy a property that needs repairs, even extensive repairs, the amount of discount you can get on that property can be sometimes 50% or more. Also, because it's a distressed property, there's gonna be less competition, therefore it's gonna give you a greater advantage. Also, it gives you a chance to customize the home from scratch and you are in charge of your budget. I actually bought a trap house, that's like T-R-A-P, you know, like in the rap videos, like a bona fide drug house, right? I'm gonna show you how much I paid for it, the bedroom count, what it looked like before, and then what it looked like after. Here we go. Pretty scary, right? You should have seen the refrigerator. OMG. It was black inside. Like, I don't even know how they get like that. It used to be white. It smelled like, yeah. So you're going to see that we taped it up and the guy from Lowe's that gave us our new refrigerator saw the inside and would not take it. Like, it was that bad. Okay, so this is the after pictures of this same property. Here we go. Okay, so this is the entrance right here. That's the front door. You open the door and bam, anybody would want to live in here. There is the hallway. There is the new kitchen. That is the oversized laundry room. Here is a bedroom. This is the brand new bathroom. All custom laid on the floor and on the walls. Very inexpensive and very appealing and most importantly, durable. This is the other bathroom as well. This is the outside of the house. So I bought this house distressed, obviously you saw the video, wow, for $55,000. It's a five bedroom home, 1.5 bath. That's a full bath and then a half bath, just missing the shower. And I got this property only because nobody else, for the most part, minus a few investors, would want to touch something like this because literally the day I walked this property, you had to be careful that you didn't step on exposed needles. Yeah, that's needles in almost every room of the house as you're walking. You have to be careful that your foot doesn't go on one. So there was a lot of investors, including my real estate agent, who would not step inside the property. Those are the kind of properties you're looking for because the renovation on that property cost approximately $35,000, putting me all in on that property at $90,000. Now, the only comp on that street today is $145,000, and that is a three bedroom minus a five. So basically my comp could easily be, let's say $170,000. So I'm in the property for 90, it's worth 170. I'm in it done for about 
half of retail market value. And that is why you buy properties that are distressed and then you rehab them and fix them up. Now, let's do the flip side. Say you didn't want to go through any renovations whatsoever. And I kind of don't blame you if you're getting started because it can be very intimidating, especially when you don't have contractors, you don't have plumbers, you don't have electricians, you don't even know who to trust and who's going to do you over on one. So I understand it's really scary to get into it. But here's another example. Say you found that same property. This one's distressed, this one's not. You're going to buy the one that's not distressed. So here's the thing. When you buy that property, you try to cash flow a minimum of 1% of what you are in the property per month. So if you're buying it at pretty close to retail because you're not going to get that much of a discount if it's already been HGTV. So you're going to be able to rent it for hopefully 1%. Now you might have to look at 100 properties for you can actually hit those numbers and not do any work. That's the that's the caveat. When the work's already been done, the profits have basically already been built in to the selling price. So you're kind of already paying for it already done plus an extra, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 dollars depending on the price of the house. So it's going to be much much harder to cash flow. Also, if you're an investor like myself and you like to buy a property be in it for well under market value. So when you do a cash out refi, otherwise known as the Burr strategy, check it out. You can do this. You can actually buy it, renovate it, rent it, refinance it, pull 100% of the money that you have in that house out. So you have zero of your own money in that house and still be cash flowing, guys. That's the most important part about a buy and hold strategy in order to not run out of money. You buy, you renovate, because that's part of the Burr strategy. Check out biggerpockets.com or check out a video I will link below on the Burr strategy explained. So basically it comes down to this. You can buy already done and your cash flow will be much, much less. Or you could buy it, put some rehab. Guys, it could be as simple as Throw a new carpet, I'm being as cheap as I can. Throw a new carpet, throw a new paint, maybe some backsplash, a couple doors, or some, do a miscellaneous cosmetic stuff, and bam, you're in the game, guys. That doesn't cost a lot of money. You can throw carpet in a house for a couple thousand, do paint for a couple thousand, a little bit here and there, put $5,000 in that property, and that property will look fantastic. It just might not be up to standards as far as the other rentals in the area, but at least it'll look clean, and that is something Sometimes one of the most important factors when somebody is looking in a low-end rental property is, is it affordable, is it clean, is it in a decent location? And as long as you can check the clean mark off, doesn't have to be updated, you can still rent that property. Guys, if you got any value in this video whatsoever, consider smashing that like button. I'm almost at 100 subscribers as of this video, guys. Check it out, I'm at like 96 right now. I'm super stoked for hitting my milestone of 100 subscribers. So, if you like this content, you like what you hear, I make several videos per week and consider subscribing because I need a couple more and I'm super stoked about it. Uh, until next time, I will see you on the next one. Any questions, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.